Have you heard the weird tales of the Whistler? I'm the Whistler. Gentlemen, we seven scientists have banded together because the government of Austria is in deadly peril. We have evidence that Austria is being dangerously undermined by the Nazis, and that nothing is being done from the standpoint of the law to prevent it. We have therefore resolved to take measures into our own hands and prevent this chaos. At our next meeting, we shall present the names of those in high places who attempt to divide and conquer, and shall decide then as to what action shall be taken against them. And such was the organization in which Hans Minkler, the young, mild-mannered biologist of Vienna, suddenly found himself a member. Hans Minkler, whose whole life was dedicated to the preservation and the saving of human life. Hans Minkler, referred to by his classmates as the man who couldn't kill a fly. Saturday night, and again, CBS presents The Whistler. I, the whistler, know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, many secrets hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. And so I tell you tonight the incredible tale of the letter. Hans Minkler, the young biologist, only half heard the speech of the leader of the seven scientists. For Hans was dreaming of his beloved experiments his experiments, and the pretty niece of Monsieur Gallet, the lovely Vielle, who had been living in Vienna these past four years. Kindly, Monsieur Gallet was interested in Hans Minkler's theories, and Hans was hoping Gallet might finance them. Well, Dr. Minkler, I've studied the outline of your proposed experiments, and I've come to the conclusion that you can accomplish great things. Oh. Well, that makes me very happy, Monsieur Gallet. How much do you think you'll need to carry on? I feel quite sure that I could get along for a couple of years on 5,000. If my cell experiments prove successful, human life may be prolonged considerably. I have all the faith in the world in Hans, Uncle. <laughs> my niece is certainly sold on your ability, Dr. Minglin. So are you, Uncle. You may as well admit it. Young men with your principles are all too scarce today. Europe seems to be saturated with men who claim they want to save mankind... They all seem to want to arrive at it through a destructive method. Well, it's only a temporary condition. Who do you plan to have assist you? Kurt Lassner? Kurt? Um, well, I haven't decided yet. Kurt is a fine young man. Yes, he was a good student, but he's drifted away from his studies. He's become absorbed in politics. Very well, Hans. I'll start you out with 5,000. Is that the way you want it, Vielle? Yes, Uncle, you're a darling. Oh, <laughs> I hope that someday I, I may be able to repay you. See who that is, Vielle. Come into the library, Hans. I'll give you a check. <laughs> yes, yes, of course. Oh, good evening, Kurt. Hello, Vielle. Well, how are you? I'm very well, Kurt. Mm, you're very lovely this evening. Thank you. Yes, indeed. The prettiest girl in Vienna. Uh, is Hans here? I said I'd pick him up on my way downtown. Uh, yes, he's talking to Uncle. We're talking business. Oh, my, I've had a busy day. Not enough hours to go around. Sit down, Kurt. Thanks. Kurt, why have you given up your career? Biology? No, oh, I don't know. But you could do so much good. You were so well equipped to carry on in science. Think of the things yet to be done. I'm going to do things. Great things. I mean things that will really benefit mankind. Well, that's what I mean, too. <laughs> you know, you sound like Hans. Hans is very sad about your dropping your work. You counted on your helping him in his experiments. Oh, he'll get over it. Besides, those experiments can wait a while. No, Hans is going ahead. Who's going to help him? I am, if no one else. You? Well, how can you help him? I can learn biology. But it'll take a lot of money to do what he planned. He has the money. It's all arranged. My uncle has financed him. Your uncle? Yes. Well, I wish Hans luck. And I'm going to marry Hans. What? You and Hans? Well, what a surprise. Yes, I've made up my mind. I see. Well, I guess... Ah, good evening, Kurt. Glad to see you. Good evening. Uh, hello, Kurt. Oh, have you heard the good news? Oh, yes, Viel just told me. And I wish you both good luck. I hope you'll be very happy. And when's the wedding? Uh, wedding? What wedding? Oh, yes. <laughs> Me, of course. <laughs> Typical absent-minded professor. See, look, I have the money for my experiments. 
Well, Hans, hey, it's quarter to eight. We better run along. We have an appointment at eight. Hmm? Oh, yes, the meeting. I'd forgotten. Yes, I'll be right with you. Goodbye, monsieur. Bye. Good night, Leo. Darling. Good night, Hans, dear. I'll see you in the morning. <laughs> So Hans Minkler reluctantly attends his second meeting and with Kurt Lassner joins the five scientists in the darkened room. The single low lamp on the table casts their shadows on the wall. The leader is speaking so, again. Gentlemen, we have learned who these fifth columnists are. So it is our duty as loyal citizens to take action against these men. We have learned who the leader is and naturally he must be the first one to go. In this envelope I have his name. We will now draw lots to select the one among us to carry out instructions which will be read later. Are you ready with the straws, Kurt Lassner? Ready, sir. This is an old and simple method, but since there are only seven of us, it will suffice. Proceed, Kurt. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All of us have drawn, sir. Good. Here is the envelope containing the name of our victim. Who has the short straw? Well, I, I guess I have. Hans Minkler. Here's the envelope. But before you open it, we must tell you what the committee has decided to do about this man. He is to die. Die? And that task has fallen to you. You mean this man is to be murdered? Exactly. What? You don't know me, gentlemen. I'm a saver of life. I, I wouldn't consider such a thing for a moment. Herr Minkler, you are a member of this group. You know our secrets. It will be best for us and for you if you completely forget your scruples. Oh, but uh, I can't belong to a society with such diabolical purposes. Why, I didn't realize what this was all about. Oh, no, I withdraw. It's too late to think about withdrawing. Do you mean that you actually expect me to kill someone? You have been selected. You are fools. Well, I couldn't kill a fly. I couldn't harm a living thing if the whole country went up in smoke. This is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of. You're not scientists. You're a band of madmen. Fiends. Sit down, Hans Minkler. We're not a band of madmen and we are not fiends. We are loyal patriots of Austria who are determined to save our country. Any one of us might have drawn that straw. Well, I don't want to be a party to such a plan. I'll not commit murder. Unfortunately, you know too much about us now to pull out. And suppose I refuse? Then you will accomplish nothing. Not only will we eradicate our selected victim, but we'll see to it that you are eradicated with him. Who is this victim? Open the envelope. Very well. What? Why, you are insane. The whole lot of you. You see, a galet is the soul of honor. You see, a galet is one of the most honest men I've ever met. Monsieur Galet is the leader of the Nazi party. I don't believe it. Why, I'm to marry his niece. Did you say, Monsieur Gallet? Yes, you know that's ridiculous, Court. He'd never do such a thing. Gallet is the leader. We have proof. He also has a very lovely niece. And I'm sure you'd want nothing to happen to her. Would you, Herr Minkler? No. No, I wouldn't. But you, you must give me time. Time to think. There is nothing to think about. It has been decided. Gallet must be exterminated within 12 hours. Very well. There's nothing else for me to do. Good night, gentlemen. Good night, Herr Minkler. And remember, if you don't accomplish this task within 12 hours, we will be forced to take care of you. And if we can't find you, we will find the girl. Yes, I, I understand. Good night. <laughs> going to do about it. You sat in your apartment for two hours now. Which shall it be? Three lives are at stake. The uncle's and yours and VL's. <laughs> Hans gets his car and drives to Monsieur Gallet's home. Well, hello, Hans. What on earth are you doing here? I didn't expect you back this evening. Where is VL? Why, she went to some friends. She probably won't be back till after midnight. What on earth's wrong with you? Get your hat and coat, Monsieur Gallet. What? Have you been drinking, Hans? Get your hat and coat. 
Now, wait a minute. Suppose you explain... There's no what... time for explanations. Get your things. What for? You're coming with me. <laughs> I'm just ready to turn in. You better run along, Hans. You feel better in the morning. Put up your hands, Monsieur Gillet. What? <laughs> this is the funniest thing I've ever encountered. Have you really got a gun in your pocket? I have. I hope you don't force me to prove it. Well, this is certainly a surprise. The meaning of all this... I've just discovered that you're the leader of the Nazis. who are trying to undermine the Austrian government. <laughs> are you serious? Yes. Who told you such a thing? There is an organization which is determined to eradicate all Nazis one by one. And you are the leader. Read this. It says, Leader Paul Gallet. Death. This is the maddest thing I've ever heard of. I've been highly active in anti-Nazi ah, work. They say that's merely a cover-up. Are you a member of this secret organization? Yes. You've been selected to kill me? Yes. Unbelievable that you, Hans Minkler, could be mixed up in such a thing. I think you're being hoodwinked. I am an anti-Nazi. If you plan to kill me, you must belong to the Nazi organization. Get your things and come along. What do you intend to do with me? That's all planned. Come along. Very well. Hey, you. Oh, Give me that gun. You fool. No, 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 don't. You don't. Monsieur. Monsieur. Good Lord. Hans stands staring at the body of Monsieur Gallet for a few moments. Then in a daze, he turns out the lights, closes the library door, and returns to his apartment. <laughs> for the remainder of the night, he sits at his desk, staring into the darkness, lost in thought. And then morning comes, and Vielle at her home opens the library door and... <laughs> Well, he's been dead about eight hours, Fräulein. Who on earth would do such a thing? He had no enemies. He was quite active in anti-Nazi work. Good. There's something we found on the library floor. The, the pipe? Yes. The bowl is hand-carved, has initials on it. As you see, the stem is broken. Have you ever seen this pipe before? Well, I don't remember. There's something else we found, a note, which reads, Leader Paul Gallet, death. Do you recognize the handwriting? No. Do you know anyone whose initials are H.M., the initials carved on the pipe bowl? Yes, the, the pipe belongs to my fiancé, Hans Minkler. Your fiancé. What time did you return home last night? I attended a party and got here about one o'clock. I supposed Uncle was in bed. I didn't look in the library. I went straight to my room. What is Hans Minkler's address? I'm sure Hans had nothing to do with this. Are you? He lives at 13 Cronhead Street. I'll run over there. Please don't touch anything in the library. I won't. Good morning. Court. Court, something terrible has happened. Uncle was murdered last night. The police have just left. They, they found Hans's pipe on the library floor. It, it was broken. They've gone to his apartment. Please come over right away. <laughs> Oh, Hans, this is Kurt. The police found your pipe in Galais' library. They're on their way to your place. You've got to get out of the country immediately. Don't wait a moment. Oh, Kurt. Kurt, it's terrible. Oh, now, now, control yourself, Ian. Yeah. Oh, Kurt, I can't imagine why anyone would do such a thing. Kurt, do you know where Hans is? Well, I suppose he's at his apartment. Hasn't he called you this morning? He usually does, but he hasn't. They found Hans's broken pipe near Uncle's body. Could I must warn Hans. I must let him know what's happened. Oh, it's pipe, huh? Well, that's bad. By all means, phone him at once. Oh, you call him. Of course. It's chronic start 4347. Right. Ringing. He must be there. Oh, he would have answered by now. Where could he be? I haven't the slightest idea. But he always calls me before this. Could it? It isn't possible. It can't be. Oh, now, now, just try to control yourself, Yale. Oh, 
stew. It is good. Special delivery. Sign here, please. Well, thank you. Who's it for? For you. Court. It's from Hans. Good heavens, read it. Leaving Vienna on important business. Contact me at 16 Rue de Roche, Paris, under the name of Pierre Cabot, H.N. Well, I don't understand it. What does he mean? What important business? Why should he disappear like this? Oh, I have no idea, but it does look strange. Your uncle is murdered and Hans disappears. Oh, but what motive could he have had? But they found his pipe near Uncle's body. Oh, you know Hans had nothing to do with it. I'll admit he's always been rather peculiar, never seemed to let loose, always seemed to be on his guard, but... Well, I can think of no reason for this. But what could this important business be? He never told me of it. And why on earth should he go to Paris under an assumed name? Well, that is strange. Could that officer said something. What? Well, you know the knuckle was active in anti-Nazi work. Do you suppose it could be a Nazi? Well, why not? But who? Who do we know that's a Nazi? I, I certainly Wait don't... a minute. You just said that you felt Hans was always on his guard... Do you mean you felt he was concealing something? Well, there have been times when I felt that, but on the whole, I've thought of him as a slow-thinking, absent-minded professor. But it does seem strange that the moment Uncle gave him the check that this should happen and he should disappear. Maybe he went to visit our old pal, Jean Renault. You remember Jean? He was one of our classmates. But I have a strange feeling that Hans wouldn't go away like this without telling me beforehand, unless something were wrong... You, do you suppose that Hans has been deceiving us all along? What makes you ask that? Well, it suddenly occurred to me that he spoke French without the trace of an accent. And I remember Jean Renault said once that he spoke English without an accent. So what? Well, if he did, where did he learn to do that? Certainly not by living in Vienna all his life. Oh, I see what you mean. Why didn't he tell me beforehand that he was leaving? But he wrote you this letter. Yes, but it wasn't written by the Hans, I know. Oh, I, I think you'd better forget about it. Could... I didn't tell you this. The police found a note on the floor. It said, Leader Paul Gallet, death. It must have meant that Uncle was an anti-Nazi leader and he was sentenced to die. And if this ties in with Hans' disappearance, then Hans must have been connected with the Nazis. Oh, darling, you're getting yourself all worked up. You don't think Hans was a Nazi? Well, I'll admit the way you've got it all worked out, it sounds plausible, but... If he was a Nazi and he's left the country, what can we do about it? He won't come back. But why should he go to Paris? Well, Jean Renault was a good friend of ours. I'm sure Jean knows nothing about Hans being a Nazi. Jean would never suspect him. Maybe Paris is his next assignment. Nazis are just as busy in France as they are here. Let's see that letter from Hans. He says here, contact me, 16 Rue de Roche, Paris. That's Renault's address, 16 Rue de Roche. Oh, good, good. I just can't believe it. How could I have been such a fool? I'll see who it is, darling. I'm Captain Gruber from police headquarters. Oh, come in, Captain. Sorry to trouble you again, Furlan. But we went to Herr Minkley's apartment. He wasn't there. He wasn't? His car has not been in the garage all night. That's strange. We found this writing on the notepad on his desk. Is it his handwriting? Yes. He's written the same two words over and over again. Galley and D.A. As though he tried to make up his mind about something. But what's become of his car? The car's been found. Where? In the public garage. From all indications, Minkler's left the country. Probably for France. Oh, why France? We've discovered that Hans Minkler is a French citizen. A French citizen? Well, he always led us to believe that he was a native Austrian. Now, uh, we'll want to check things over a little further. We'll be back this afternoon. Please don't disturb anything. No, no, we won't. By the way... What is your name, sir? Hmm? Oh, oh, my name is Kurt Lasner. Good day. Kurt, what did you see? What were you looking at just then? Well, what do you mean? What startled you on Uncle's desk? Well, well nothing, nothing at all. Here, let me see. Good heavens, I see it. Here on the desk blotter, it's Uncle's handwriting, it says, Find Hans Minkler. And it was Hans. It was. Uncle was trying to tell us who did it. Uh, maybe. Oh, to think that he could be so low as to take Uncle's money and then kill him. Oh, please, Vielle. I just can't believe it. I won't believe it. I must. Well, I'm sorry to say that all the evidence is certainly against him. 
Oh, come the ale. Try to get this off your mind. Try to get some rest. The police will take care of everything. Oh, yes, could I? I guess you're right. If Hans did do it, he'll pay. He's the one who'll do the suffering. Believe me. <laughs> During the night, the Nazi hordes rolled swiftly into Austria and, without firing a shot, took over the reins of government. A few weeks later, France declared war. Then one night, Hans Minkler makes his way through the maze of Paris traffic and knocks at the door of number 16, Rue de Roche. Oh. Yes? Oh, good evening. Good evening. Is Jean Renault in? Who shall I say is calling? Why, um... Pierre Cabot. Won't you come in, Monsieur Cabot? Major Renault has just stepped out. He'll be back shortly. Was he expecting you? Uh, no. Did you say Major Renault? Yes. Since war has been declared, he's gone on the active service list. Oh, I see. I've been phoning for a week, but no one answered. You haven't seen the Major in some time? No, no, I haven't. I've been in Austria for several years. Renault and I went to school together in Vienna. Oh. Are you by any chance... Hans Minkler. How did you know that? Why are you traveling incognito? Well, I am... Well, yes. Where is Renault? I regret to inform you that Renault has been in Africa for some time. He's due back in a few weeks, however. Did you know Monsieur Gallet in Vienna? Why, yes. Who are you? I'm Monsieur de Vaux of the French Sauté. Oh. oh, police. Yes. Did you ever accept any money from Monsieur Gallet? Why, I... Why are you asking me these questions? You never accepted money from Gallet? No. Search him, Henri. No, Hang just on. a moment. Sorry, Minkler. I'll take the bill for Larry. Yes, well, sir. I don't understand all this. You understand, all right. Well. So you never received money from Gallet. What's this check for? Well, uh, that's to help carry on my experiments. Undoubtedly. Monsieur Gallet was helping you and quite a number of others to carry on experiments. Others? I suppose you say you're new at this game. Game? I don't know what you mean. I had nothing to do with his death. Nothing. Yes, I believe that. Why should you kill one of your own? Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. If you were intending to carry on experiments in Vienna, why is this check drawn on the Bank of Paris? Well, maybe he had a surplus of funds here. <laughs> Indeed he did. How did you know I was coming here? We knew. Just what were your plans? Oh, this is ridiculous. I'm not a spy... I was engaged to marry Gallet's niece. Really? Some way I got mixed up with an organization which planned to rid Austria of all Nazis. <laughs> they claimed that Monsieur Gallet was the leader in Vienna. I denied it. But nevertheless, I, I was selected to, to murder him. Oh, I see. And told that if I refused, it, it'd also kill me and my fiancée as well. I decided to get them out of the country. I went to Gallet's home. I, my fiancée was not there. I knew there was no time to lose. So I tried to take him away by force. He was suspicious of me. We suddenly got into a scuffle. And, and then, then someone behind me fired a gun. I don't know who it was. And Gallet fell dead. I see. I went to my home. Next morning learned that they were looking for me. I got out of the country and in a roundabout way I, I came to Paris. A good story. But it doesn't hold water. Gallet was a Nazi leader and there's too much evidence against you, Minkler. Come on. Let's go now to headquarters. Two weeks later, Jean Reno returns to Paris. Then, six weeks after Austria surrenders, Kurt and Viel escape from the Nazis and make their way to Paris. Jean Reno meets Kurt on the street and asks him to bring Viel to visit him at 16 Rue de Roche. Come in, Kurt. Well, well, Viel. It's been a long time. How are you? Excellent, thank you. So you two are married. Oh, my congratulations. Though I didn't expect it to work out quite this way. No? Why not? Well, I always had an idea that you might marry Hans Minkler. Well, one never knows. <laughs> no, Kurt. One never does. By the way, uh, have you seen Hans? He's in Paris. Been here for several weeks. Has he? Yes. Oh, tell me you haven't seen him. Well, he told us he was coming to visit you. Oh, yes. He's in Paris. I wasn't here when he arrived. He left several notes. 
I found him when I returned. But do you know where he is now? Yes. Would you like to see him? Yes, I would. Hans is dead. Dead? What? Dead? Yes. He was executed as a Nazi spy. A Nazi spy? Yes. I got here too late to help him. They had conclusive evidence against him. Why, that's ridiculous. Hans is dead, nevertheless. But what happened? Well, it seems Hans got into some trouble in Vienna. He came to Paris to see me. In some way, the Sûreté here was informed that he was a Nazi. was coming here to carry on. But who on earth would accuse Hans of such a thing? I wonder. But they received a letter from Vienna accusing Hans. The Sûreté found a check on him from a high Nazi official. There was nothing that could save him. A check from a high Nazi official? Who was the official? Paul Gallet, the heir's uncle. What? Didn't you know about your uncle? I don't believe it. Whether you do or not, he was a Nazi. The Secret Service has known it for years. He may or may not have given the check to Hans for Nazi purposes. But the evidence was against Hans. Then the letter came to the Surete saying Hans was a Nazi agent. They found him here, arrested him. That's all there was to it. But who would write such a letter? Hans had no enemies. Would you like to read the letter? Oh, yes. Here it is. Hans Minkler, under alias of Pierre Capot, has given evidence of being a Nazi spy. Locate him at 16 Rue de Roche, Paris. And that's all that was necessary. Oh, how awful. I, I can't imagine such a thing. Notice the handwriting, Kurt. What? Ah, yes. Viel, this is your handwriting. It is not. I'm positive. You wrote this. No. Don't lie to me. I know your writing. You wrote this letter. All right. All right, I did. I was convinced that he deceived me. I was convinced he killed Uncle. Yes, I wrote it. How could you? I never dreamed Uncle was a Nazi. I thought Hans was a Nazi. I was determined to make him suffer. You believe me, don't you? Yes, Viel. I believe you. But I'm awfully, awfully sorry for you. Oh, poor Hans. Poor Hans. Oh, I'll never forgive myself. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Viel. What a terrible injustice you have done. But someday, perhaps, you'll learn what really happened to your uncle. It wasn't Hans who killed him. Hans didn't even have a gun, just a pipe. But Hans wanted to get him safely out of the country. And Kurt knew that Hans would never go through with the Order of the Secret Seven. So he followed Hans. And when he saw what was happening, he shot Galay and disappeared and let you think Hans did it. Because Kurt was in love with you, too, Viel. <laughs> CBS has presented The Whistler. Original music for this production was composed and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. The Whistler is written and directed by J. Donald Wilson and originates from Columbia Square in Hollywood. Next week, same time... I, the Whistler, will return to tell you the strange tale of Out of the Fog. <laughs> Good night. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.